Her name is Fanula O'Reilly. She's um, Irish and she studied systems engineering in America in the George Washington University. And then she went on to be involved in lots of different hackathons and coding, and she became a NASA data nut, which she's going to tell us a little bit about. And then earlier this year, she won Miss Universe Ireland 2019. And uh, she really believes that we can be many things at the same time, and we can embrace a career in science and in modeling simultaneously because we can be anything we want to be. So I hope you look forward to the chat that we're going to have as much as I have. Can we please welcome to the stage Fanula O'Reilly? including space, NASA, all sorts of amazing things. So I hope you guys are really interested in what we're going to be doing. So lovely to be here with you. It's lovely to meet you too. Thank Fanula. you for having me. So tell us, tell us about, I mean, where we're at really in this room, like we're all about to do our leaving certs and we have to think about our careers. So how did you figure out that you were an engineer and that you wanted to study systems engineering? Yeah, okay, so we're going back quite a few years <laughs> when I was in school, it was a while ago. But I, I was always kind of good at math. I had, I'd been interested in mathematics for a really long time. But it wasn't until, let's see, I was in, I was about 14 years old. I had no idea what an engineer was. I mean, I was looking around, what does an engineer really do on a daily basis? You know, okay, you sit in a room and you make things. But what does that really look like? I yeah. have no idea. And it took um, a math teacher to uh, uh, put an application in front of me and say, I need you to apply to this program. I know that you're good at this, I know that uh, you, you have uh, uh, some talent here, but let's see what you can do, let's, let's get something going. And um, I applied to this program called the Summer Math and Science Honors Academy at UC Berkeley. Uh, UC Berkeley is the University of California, Berkeley, um, and it's an amazing school, and I was really young at the time, but they had this program where you could go live on campus, and you could study during uh, the summer. Now, I, d raise your hand if you think studying during the summer sounds like fun. That's what I thought. <laughs> it doesn't sound like fun at all. <laughs> but it was an opportunity. What do we say? What do we have? <laughs> but I mean, it didn't sound like fun to me. But. I, I thought, you know, this is an opportunity. I get to live on a university campus. Yeah. I get to be around other students that are kind of interested in the same things that I am. And so I applied, and I was accepted to the program, and I got to really learn about what it meant to work as an engineer. Yeah. I got to meet women who are engineers and scientists for the very first time. And so it kind of it demystified for me what the job was. It, it no longer was something that was very far-reaching, something that didn't seem like it could be for me. It was something that was really cool, it was innovative. I've always viewed myself as an artistic person, and so I was able to kind of hone my capabilities yeah. and, and really focus in on one thing. Very good, excellent. And tell us about your work then, the, the NASA data note. Tell us about that. What does that even mean? Absolutely. So the word data note sounds really cool, I think. Yeah, it's um, brilliant. I know. Great. <laughs> they gave me a really amazing title, but I, I think when it comes down to it, a data note is a data scientist. Yeah. And if you're wondering what is a data scientist, it is someone that works with numbers. It's someone that works with big data, right? So if you're on your phone, and you're on Instagram, for example. We're all on Instagram, aren't we? Yeah, okay, yeah, we're all on Instagram. Someone has to go through, have you ever heard of the algorithm on Instagram? Why are people not seeing my, my, my posts as much as I thought on Wednesday as they would if I post on Sunday? That's because of the data. Someone has, someone's creating, uh, they're utilizing the data to make sure that you can, so that they have this algorithm so that sometimes uh, uh, your posts are going to be put in, more, in front of more friends than, other, than on other days. And so when it comes to being a data scientist for NASA, you're, you're just, you're, you, you're talking about data, you're talking about NASA's data, but it's also always space data. So it's really kind of cool stuff because you get to um, 
look outwardly at the world and you get to uh, uh, you know, do very interesting things. Um, one of the projects that I had been working on dealt with exoplanets and um, being able to spot exoplanets and input that data into a system that then used predictive analytics to talk about where we might be able to find even new exoplanets. Yeah. And, um, and so it's been really cool uh, to be a NASA data not also because I've been able to do some really amazing things. And I, I brought a few pictures with me because I, I want you guys to see um, some of the, the, the different things that I've been able to work on. Um, there's me, I'm at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. I was at the launch and landing. Last year we went to Mars, right? NASA went to Mars for the second time. It was the seventh mission that we had but only the, the second successful one. So that means five missions failed. And so I was a part of both the launch and the landing, which was really amazing because, you know, to be a part of something that's so much bigger than yourself, it really means so much, right? And, um, and so it was a really amazing experience. Uh, here, you can see on the right-hand side, I'm standing next to some of the, uh, jet, propul um, <clears throat> the jet propulsions. Uh, down at the bottom, I'm with some of the other engineers in, uh, uh, that are in the room. We're all really excited because, you know, this was historic. And um, it was a really exciting time. The middle picture, I'm standing in front of the rocket that took off to Mars. And it took about six months to get there. And um, I was there because I, was, uh, I brought in an organization called Girls Who Code, which um, I'm a coder. As a data scientist, I, I code. I've been coding since I was 15. So are some of you guys in the room 15? Yeah, we've got quite a few. Have you ever been interested in coding? It's a very, very, very useful skill. All right, I heard you, yeah. <laughs> I heard you. It's, it's, a, it's a really useful skill. And, um, you know, it's not something that's easy to do. You have to work on it over time. And, you know, it's not something that just comes naturally. But when you get going and you, and you keep working and you, you keep practicing, you know, you're able to work on amazing projects like this. And um, so the, the uh, InSight mission to Mars, it took six months for this rocket to finally reach Mars. And then the thing, it separated and we had this lander, which is similar to a rover, except a rover roves around on the Martian surface, right? A lander, the name is pretty indicative of what it does. It lands and is stationary. And it's really cool because what the experiment is all about is getting data from uh, Mars. We're, we did some, some drilling into the, the Martian crust. You know, if, if, okay, if we call the surface of Earth the Earth, what would we call, uh, and, we, and we call uh, earthquakes uh, here, you know, on Earth, we call them earthquakes, what would we call um, the so same thing on Mars? Does anyone have an idea of what it would be called on Mars? What would an earthquake be called on Mars? Earthquake. Yes, a Mars quake, exactly. There you go, come on. It's not rocket science. <laughs> no, wait, it is. <laughs> so it's a Mars quake, right? And so what we're doing is we're getting data on the Mars quake. You know, we're figuring out what do these numbers mean. And that data specifically is sent back here to Earth. Someone like me is going to analyze it, right? And then we're using that information to figure out how we can send people to Mars. And you know, maybe the generations before us won't be able to do it, but during our, you know, during our lifetime, we will see someone on Mars. We'll see a woman on the moon. And that could be anyone in this room even. So, um, let's see, in the top left corner, my left, uh, your right, that is the, the National Press Conference for NASA uh, at C-SPAN. And what's C-SPAN? I see that everywhere. Oh, C-SPAN is, uh, it's a really large government network in America. It's typically, sometimes I don't like to watch it because I'm like, oh man, this is droning on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you think, oh well, science, technology, engineering, math, I don't know if I'd be interested in that because it seems a bit boring, right? Like, where's the energy, you know? But it's there. And someone like me, I was never deterred by it, and I have so much fun in my job. It's not, a, it's not a traditional type of job, but because, you know, as an engineer, you're able to create things. And so for me, I created the type of job that I wanted to see in the world. And Fanula, where did your passion for space come from? Was there any particular person or experience or? I fell into it. I, I never grew up with this idea that I was interested in space. I never grew up with an idea that, oh, I wanted to be an astronaut. 
it, it was never something that I thought was necessarily for me. I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me doing it. Yeah. Um, my, my dad's Irish, uh, my mom is African American, so I'm biracial. And I didn't see a lot of people, a lot of women of color, who had similar experiences uh, as I had doing these kinds of things. And so, just I think simply because I didn't have that visible role model to kind of say, hey, it's, it's okay, you can be interested in this kind of thing, I just didn't even think of it. So, uh, I actually wasn't until university. I graduated from the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And I studied systems engineering, which is a type of engineering that it started in the 70s. It's a bit newer, and it's um, all about optimization. How do you do things in the best way possible, using math, using science, and um, that was really great for me because it's, it's all about a problem-solving attitude. Yeah. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room, mm -mm. but you have to be someone willing to work on a problem probably longer than other people. When sometimes people give up and they say, ah, this is too difficult, I can't get over the obstacle, you have to be the kind of person that says, okay, I can't get over the obstacle, but how can I get around it? What can I do to move around this? And um, so I learned a lot through the program, through the systems engineering program, because it, it did teach me that I didn't have to be a genius in order to make a difference. I didn't have to be a genius in order to do something really cool. And, um, and so, yeah, it, it's been an amazing experience so far. Uh, I, I'm so glad to even be here and speak to you guys because I found role models for myself. But I think that we still need to give women and people of color and, you know, people with different diverse backgrounds the platforms that they need to share their stories. Because everyone has a story and we need to start sharing them and talking about them and coming together and thinking about opportunities in that kind of way. And tell us then about how you figured out a way to make this unique career path for yourself, being involved in like Miss Universe Ireland and then also combining STEM. How did you make all that work for yourself? Oh man, it's, it's, a lo it's been a long time coming. I, I started modeling, I was working in fashion when I was in university. I took a year because um, I, my dad was living in uh, Italy and so I started uh, in Milan, which was an amazing experience. I think it's a great lesson. I, there, there was no linear path. I tried a lot of different things in school. Even, I was, my very first year in university, I was a part of the Naval ROTC program, which is the military, because I thought I wanted to be a helicopter pilot. And so I had a lot of interests. And so I, I think one of the best things that you can do is explore those interests. And so I took a year off of school and I started modeling in Milan. And I learned a lot about myself during that time. One of the things that I learned was that we're, uh, le uh, learning and working in engineering and getting my degree was so much more important to me than I initially had thought. Yeah. I, there were so many times where I was like, I want to leave school, I don't want to do this, you know, maybe I'll switch into something easier. But my time off actually taught me that that is where I wanted to be. Great. And, um, and so when I, once I graduated, I started working in the startup space, the, the technology startup space, and that gave me a lot of confidence in my abilities as an entrepreneur, as someone who can create real change in the organization that I work for. I was given a lot of responsibility at a young age, and I didn't know if I, if I was qualified even for being able to do what I was uh, doing, but I had a lot of people that believed in me, and it helped. Yeah. It gave me the confidence to keep going, and so, I moved back home and I thought, how can I continue doing all of the things that I love? And then the Miss Universe, Ar Miss Universe Ireland, the organization made so much sense for me because I, I get to do things like this where I get to share my story, where I get to talk about the NASA Data Nuts program and the NASA Space Apps Challenge and, and also you know, be able to do some of the other fun things that I love to do. Yeah. And what advice would you give to people like us who, we all want more than one thing in life, and lots of us are creative and, and scientific. What advice would you give us to, to, to know how to be yourself and encompass all the different parts of yourself at the same time? Explore your options. Don't think that just because someone else hasn't done what you're doing or what you hope to do, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. You know, there are a lot of ways to, to bring all of your different interests together, and I think I'm a testament to that, but no one's, no one's path has to be very strict, right? If you uh, are dreaming of something that you want to do, then think of creative ways in order to bring all of those passions together. 
I think that is the best piece of advice that I could give. And you know, when people tell you that it's not possible, keep working on it, right? I think that's the mentality of an engineer. You keep working on it until you receive the results that you really want. Brilliant. And like, have you got like, um, have you got a plan for the future then? Or like, how do you, what would you love to achieve in your life? There are so many things that I would absolutely love to achieve. Um, one day I hope to own my own technology company, but also I think, you know, if you're talking about anyone that works at NASA or with NASA or, or any of those things, every, you can ask anybody. Everyone wants to be an astronaut at the end of the day. So right now the youngest astronaut with NASA is actually 40 years old, which is quite, uh, quite it's considered you know a young astronaut so I have a bit of time before me but I absolutely have that in my sights and that's something that I would love to do one day and, and for Ireland what would you like to bring to, to Ireland there is a massive technology industry here yeah. and I want to be able to spotlight diversity and women uh, recently I was at the women in tech conference in Dublin which was amazing because it was this convergence of, of uh, allies women a lot of diversity just people in general who are passionate about technology sharing information, sharing what they're doing. And so I want to be able to spotlight what we're doing here in Ireland because there's so much work that, uh, that you can go into. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of uh, uh, massive companies that are here and I want to be able to uplift the community because sometimes, you know, there's still a huge gender divide in, in STEM. It's a male-dominated industry and has been for a really long time. And when you're talking about the upper echelons of, of, the, of the job, the, the job force, you know, you're talking about senior executives, you're mostly talking about men. You know, it's very homogeneous. And so what I would like to see is a world where there's equality. There's, you know, maybe half the room, or the, the, maybe our population at work represents the population that we see in our local community. Right, so if half the local community is women, maybe half of our executive board is women. Mm, yeah, and then the Miss, Miss Universe then um, competition. So when does that? When is the actual final happening? And you're representing Ireland, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. I'm not sure yet. And they still have to announce when the final is. Typically, it's in December, but since they haven't announced where or when, you know, it, it's all kind of up in the air. And, um, and, and is it a long competition? Or does it go over a long period of time? Like, is there lots of different aspects to it? Oh yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot of preparation that uh, takes place for the Miss Universe uh, competition, and I think in total I'll be there for about three weeks to a month. So wherever it is in the world, you know, it's a long time. yeah, it's a, it's a long, long time. time. Yeah. But even enough, even just being Miss Universe Ireland, I think you're making a massive. Oh, it's been unbelievable. Yeah. Even you know, being able to be here with you all is is really amazing, yeah. and um, I I just hope to keep continue to be able to do you know some amazing work here in Ireland. Yeah, it's great because I, I came across you um, just the last few days, and your Instagram is lovely. It's really healthy, and it's really interesting to see somebody who has a career in um, you know an engineering field, but at the same time has this amazing Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> with all these really glamorous pictures, I was like, come on, and so many followers. Like, it's, I think it's great that, oh, you're, that, you're, that, you're, that you're existing in this world where normally people don't um, naturally kind of overlap. And I think even that alone, you're challenging perceptions of where science and technology is, and that helps everybody. Thank you. Here. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm a millennial at the end you of are. the day, yeah. and I love Instagram like the next person, and I think I have a really cool job, and so yeah, I like to be able to show that off, and then sometimes show off other things as well, like, you know, here's the makeup I did for a yeah, day. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's so glamorous and stuff, and you've been really busy the last few weeks, haven't you? Been doing yeah, it's, it's been really busy. Yeah. It's been amazing. We've done a lot of different events, both for... Um, you know, in, in Dublin, but also around uh, Ireland, we've been filming and, and doing some photo shoots, which are really fun. Yeah. And, and you're, the, you're the ambassador now for next year's Engineers yeah, Week. Yeah, I, I just was named the amb uh, ambassador for Engineers Week um, with Engineers Ireland. I'm really excited about that. There's a, there's a lot of different things coming out that I, I'm really excited to share. So if you guys are on Instagram and feel like, you know, following someone like me, then I'm Fig O'Reilly. On Instagram. Yeah, it's brilliant. Shameless um, plugs. Any, any last thoughts? You want? Any piece? Just give us one last nugget of advice and then we'll hmm. I'd say, you know, I have to say this to every room that I'm a part of reach for the stars, reach for the stars, reach for the stars. You get to create your own future, and if you want, you can absolutely do what it is that you want to achieve. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Fanula. Fanula O'Reilly. Thank you so much.